Is flame conditioning a best in slot perk? Well, I've been testing the conditioning perks for the past few days and I'm going to share my results. I think you're going to be surprised. Before I share my results with you, let's answer the question, what actually does a conditioning perk do? I'm going to use an example to explain what these perks do. For example, if you have flame conditioning on your armor, when you get hit by fire or fire damage, you will gain a fire damage absorption. So basically, you will take less fire damage when you take fire damage. But there's one big problem with these conditioning perks. They do not all proc on abilities or not all abilities will proc these conditioning perks. Later in this video, you will also see that not all perks or items will proc these conditions. Knowing this, me and the Gore gameplay spent hours testing these conditioning perks and we tested every ability that can proc every type of conditioning. Well, not all, we basically tested three different types of conditioning perks, but they cover all of the magical weapons except for the life staff. Let's start with the ice gauntlet and frost conditioning. There's three abilities that won't proc frost conditioning. Wind chill, ice storm and ice shower or deadly frost. Just to be clear, frost conditioning won't proc from these abilities, so the frost conditioning perk won't activate when these abilities are thrown on you or being used on you, but if frost conditioning is already active on you, the damage will still be reduced from these abilities. So for example, if somebody auto attacks you and the ice storm gets thrown on you, you will still take less damage since the auto attack would have procced frost conditioning. The same goes for all other abilities that doesn't proc from the conditioning perk, but the damage will still be reduced from the conditioning perk. So it doesn't proc, but you will still take reduced damage if the conditioning perk is active on you. That being said, everything that procs frost conditioning is the basic attack of ice gauntlet, ice spikes, ice pylon, and entombed. And here's my spreadsheet of a quick overview that everything that procs frost conditioning on the ice gauntlet. Now let's move on to flame conditioning. We've tested the fire stuff and the blunderbuss. I'm not going to drag it out. Here's the full summary of everything that procs flame conditioning on the fire stuff. As you can see, all of the abilities and basic attack of the fire stuff procs flame conditioning. This makes flame conditioning an excellent perk to counter the fire stuff meta or if somebody is playing with a fire stuff. But let's also go over how flame conditioning can counter the blunderbuss. Flame conditioning will proc on all of the blunderbuss abilities that has fire damage, like Azov sharpnel blast, splitting grenades, and even motor charge. The so flame conditioning will work on all of the blunderbuss abilities as well. So this makes it even a better perk in war scenarios where you will be bursted by blunderbuss and so forth. So the flame conditioning perk, I will say, is the best in slot perk if the meta shifts towards blunderbusses and firestorms. Now let's move on to the void gauntlet and abyssal conditioning. The only ability on the void gauntlet that doesn't proc the conditioning perk is oblivion. So oblivion won't proc abyssal conditioning, but all the other abilities from the void gauntlet, like the basic attack, the other other abilities will proc the abyssal conditioning perk. I can see that the abyssal conditioning perk can also be used in war scenarios or if you want to counter the void gauntlet even if somebody is running the void blade. So if void blade becomes meta or the void gauntlet becomes really strong you can also swap your flame conditioning perks for abyssal conditioning perks. Lastly we need to talk about items or perks that doesn't proc these conditioning perks for example, gems and chain and all those perks that you get on your weapon. So conditioning perks will proc on elemental gems. For example, if somebody is running a fire gem in their weapon, flame conditioning will proc from those gems. But the conditioning perks will not proc from rune glass. It has a dot damage, for example, rune glass of the ignited. So these elemental dots will not proc the conditioning perks. Also, attunement and chain will not proc conditioning either. So if you have flame attunement or chain fire on your weapon, conditioning will not proc of these weapon perks as well. You also need to remember that you can actually craft elemental version and one conditioning perk on the same item. So you can have resilient 
Elemental Adversion and Flame Conditioning all on the same item. So you can basically have two perks that can counter magical attacks or elemental attacks. Which is actually insane. Before I give you everything all in a nice summary infographic that you can take away from this video, I would like to thank the Core Gameplay for helping me with this video. He's my twin brother. He also makes amazing new world content. Go and subscribe to him. Now, here's a full summary of everything that I've learned from testing these conditioning perks. Here's everything in a neatly summarized spreadsheet. Enjoy. If you're going to play with the Fire Staff in the next patch, go and watch this video to learn how to counter Elemental Aversion.